Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I want to challenge the body of Christ and anybody else who's thinking about getting in and joining. Watch who you hook up with. Watch what you participate in. I'm going to share a reason. In the Old Testament, they lived by the law. Reading the Old Testament helps you see what God loved and what he hated. It really helps while we live in this dispensation of grace and mercy in Jesus Christ. But back then, they weren't living in Jesus, y'all. It was black and white, good or bad, no gray area. Now listen, there's no gray area now. It's just that mercy makes it seem that way. What we don't realize, when it seems like crap is hitting the fan, and no matter how hard we try, stuff turns to mud. We're praying. We're living for God, but it just doesn't seem to pan out, and we don't know why. Well, I want to share an insight with you, but you got to stick with me and hear this story. I want you to hear this story. This is Joshua chapter 7, and this is why we need to read the Old Testament. I was talking to a friend of mine last night. We need to read the Old Testament because it really shows God's heart and attitude towards certain things. And it explains why some things cut loose in our lives and they just go helter-skelter and out of control. Not all the time. Sometimes Satan is, has, has assigned a siege against us and he's trying to wear out the saints, true saints. But then there are some saints that think they're in with like Flynn with God because they're in Jesus Christ. But they don't realize that because they are still carrying all their baggage of sin into their new life, they are wreaking havoc in their own lives and keeping the door wide open for Satan to come in and just tear up everything. Listen, all right. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Kadmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Now listen, listen, let me stop here. Pat's two cents. Interject. When, the, it, when God tells the children of Israel, go in and possess the land, cross over to the other side, whatever his instruction is, there are times he tells them, take of the spoils. And there are other times when he tells them, don't bring one thing that belonged to them. Why? Most of the time, because they were loaded with idol worship and all kind of abominations, and God doesn't want anything dealing with that amongst his people. Now, you wonder why God doesn't want us playing with tarot cards and, and, and voodoo and, and uh, uh, demonic movies and witchcraft movies and well, what's the other thing that we like to do? Um, light candles and chant and channel and whatever else you do in, in that realm. This is what happens. Verse 2. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai. Now, you know, we always say, Pat's two cents, we always say the battle is the Lord's. Yeah, it is, but you can sabotage your own war. Mm. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Bethaven in the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Oh, let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. 
So there went up thither of the people about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them 36 men, and they chased them from before the gate, even unto Shabaram, and smote them in the going down, wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. Now, Pat's two cents. What the heck went wrong? Back to the verse. Verse 7. And Joshua said, Oh, wait a minute. Let me go. Verse 6. And Joshua rent his, his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face and before the ark of the Lord unto the eventide and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, Lord God, wherefore hast, hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us unto the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan. And the Lord, oh Lord, is he still talking? Oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us around and cut off our name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they have taken, they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you any more, except you destroy from among you. Let me read that. Except you destroy the accursed from among you. Pat's two cents. There are times when, sometimes in our families, it just seems like People go through hell on the left and go through hell on the right. And there's, there's havoc all over from head to toe. And it just seems like it's one defeat after another defeat. One struggle after another struggle. And we wonder why, 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 why? Well, listen, it only takes one person. This is the whole nation of Israel that lost this battle because of one man's sin. When God calls us the body of Christ, we are one. And when you got too many splinters in the body of Christ, participating in abominations, abominable acts that God does not like, that weakens the whole body of Christ worldwide. Think about that. When you compromise your holiness for sex, when you compromise your holiness for tarot cards, when you compromise your holiness for Ouija boards, for psychic readings, when you, when you compromise your holiness for astrology, uh, prophesying and prophelying and all that other crap, and you're consulting with everything else but God, when he said, do not consult with wizards that peep and mutter. Okay, moving right along. I'm just trying to keep it plain. Now, verse 12, Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you any more, except ye destroy the accursed from among you. Verse 13, Up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, 
You shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof, and the family with the Lord which the Lord shall take shall come by the households, and the household which the Lord shall take shall come by man, man by man. Now, and it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire. He and all that he hath. Because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord. And because he has wrought folly in Israel. So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes. And the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought the family of Judah and took the family of the Zarhites. And, the, and he brought the family of the Zarhite man, man by man. And Zardi, Zabdi was taken. And he brought his household man by man and Achan the son of Carmi the son of Zabdi the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah was taken and Joshua said unto Achan my son give I pray thee glory to God give I pray thee glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession unto him and tell me now what thou hast done hide it not from me and Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. And I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment and two hundred shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weight. Then I coveted them and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth and in the midst of my tent, and the silver under it. So Joshua sent messages, and they ran unto the tent, under the tent, and behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent, and brought them unto Joshua, and unto all the children of, of Israel, and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the garment, and the wedge of gold, and his sons, and his daughters, and his oxen, and his asses, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had, and they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Echor unto this day. Now listen, the very next time they fought in Ai, they won because their cursed thing was gone. How many of us as born-again Christians are living lives of defeat and battle after battle after battle that we can't seem to get over on? We can't seem to get past some of these hurdles. Somebody in our families, maybe you, and maybe all of you, who knows, have compromised here, compromised there, given in a little bit there, sinned a little there, dabbled over here, screwed around over here. And you don't think that that kind of stuff has that much of an effect, but it affects the whole family, the whole lot of you. So if you're a man of the house, excuse me, and you are, uh, you're married to the mother of your kids, but you're out there tipping, under every skirt you can get into. And you're screwing around over here and screwing around over there and gambling and doing all that you're big and bad enough to do. And you wonder why your kids are ending up on the streets. Why they're getting high. Why they're screwing around. Why they're messing over their lives. It may have just started with you. You may have cursed your kids. Who knows? See, when you open a door, listen, 
if there's a flood, you know, we've heard enough about floods. When there's a flood coming, if you open your door and your house is weak already, that flood's going to gonna level your house down. It's going to bust in. It's going to knock everything down. It's just going to screw everything up. Everything will be destroyed. Some folks may even drown and die. But if you have prepared your home and barricaded it and locked your doors and boarded up your windows and built brick walls and just totally built a fort around your home, and don't forget pray, prayer, that flood may come and your house may get wet, but it won't be destroyed. You are, you are subject and at the mercy of the elements when you come out from under the ark of safety, which is walking against God's covenant that he has with you. And you bring all that drama into your family. Women, the same thing. You have an issue with gossiping. You have an issue with telling folks business. And you're backbiter. And God hates that. You're a liar. You tell lies on people just so they can so people can listen to your drama. And you make people look bad. You are bringing curses into your family all over your kids. You're cursing your household. All right. Now, I made I I I think I've driven the, those points home. But what I'm trying to warn you about is not to be so quick to play with sin, to play tiddlywinks with sin, to hang out a little bit with sin, hang on the outskirts of sin. Sin will suck you in. It's just no way you're going to get away with it. Time will cause you to wear down. And all your little forts and all your little walls getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And then you become a house that's built on sand. And the winds came and the waves and, the, and everything in the house fell. And great was the fall of that house. Because you were not on solid ground. You were not founded on the rock. All right. I hope you get the point of why some things are continually, perpetually going helter-skelter. Why there's so much drama, so much anger in your life, so much arguing, bickering, clowning. And then some of you, I, okay, thank you, Lord. Some of you who are at least trying to live for God, you have opened the door to people who are not. And you have had pity on people God would not have pity on. And God may have them in a time of judgment. And you have run interference with what God is doing in their lives. Because that's your baby. So you allow them in your, in your house. And they're doing drugs in your house. And they're prostituting in your house. They're fighting in your house. They're stealing in your house. They're doing all kind of ruckus. Raising all kind of hell in your house. That you have dedicated to God. You have allowed the accursed thing to abide amongst your stuff. They may be your kids, but first and foremost, they're God's. And if you want those kids saved, you better turn them over to God. And God may turn them over to Satan and whoop their behinds for a minute. But he won't let them be destroyed. And you have to trust God. But if you don't trust God, you will always end up running interference with what God is trying to wrought in their life. <sighs> what he's trying to accomplish in their life. What he's trying to, to open their eyes to. Holy Spirit, angels, everything working. And here you come. Getting them out of trouble every time. Paying for the, for the nonsense. Bailing them out. 
not allowing God to handle them so they can make it into the kingdom. Don't run interference too long. All right, just a little, uh, a little added tidbit, food for thought. Don't play with the accursed thing. It's not a toy.